Okay. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jaehoon Kim. I'm a PhD student working from a multimedia company group from uh, Delft University of Technology. I'm, um, I'm working under the supervision of Cynthia Riem. And I am here to um, present uh, my, uh, one of our recent work titled as uh, One Music Represent to Rule Them All. So it's, there's no uh, reinforcement learning and also there's no robotics. But I, I hope I can deliver some insight we can get from this um, empirical study uh, of represent music representation learning for who are um, going to use this music audio signal as a um, state or the environment. Um, so this is going to be very empirical study and there is nothing very serious about um, the theoretical analysis. So um, yeah, I will deliver the, the, our uh, result of, of, on that framework. So, so I will give you some context of um, what is uh, transfer learning music IR. So maybe someone needs this kind of encoder encodes music signal, which is actually very large dimensional, uh, has a very large dimensionality. Typically for four minute songs, it used to have two channels times 44,000 times seconds. So it's going to be very large dimensionality. And someone need to encode this into fixed vector representation to do something. For example, one uh, need to build some dancing machine or some um, music recommendation agents based on these states. Um, of course, uh, because they're in the recommendation field, they people also trying to, uh, trying to use the reinforcement learning, especially for the police, uh, politic, uh, um, policy gradient. Um, so, but it's, it's in many times it's very hard to get a very uh, rich data points can encode these signals into their task at hand because many times it's very expensive. So one solution is to pick pre-trained neural network or our encoder in general, which is uh, built or trained on specific um, uh, other tasks. So for example, the one, one of the typical uh, tasks in the music IR is classification of a music genre, or it can estimate uh, the bit per minute, which stands for a bit, per, uh, which uh, in, uh, indicating how this music track is fast or slow or uh, like introduced a, num a number of times to throughout this workshop, one can get a built um, autoencoder and can representation in the middle of this neural network or, or uh, yeah, neural network. But the thing is, this is already very practical um, uh, practice uh, in vision field, you, uh, when considering about the very high uh, number of citation in the VGG paper and AlexNet paper and people very um, um, popularly use those pre-trained network and it's also going to be um, becoming more um, popular trained in the music IA also. Um, but the pro problem we found is most of them are learned from single task and single set of labels if uh, they are trained in a single uh, supervised task. Um, but can it guarantee the general adaptability? So for example, if one the presentation network is trained with one task and one set of labels, it might work very well on the very similar task if they use this pre-trained network. But if they use uh, this network to totally another task, um, then they might work well um, than they are actually expecting. So one very intuitive solution is that we already have number of tasks at hand, or there are a number of pre-trained network individually trained with different tasks then why don't you have uh, a single network or a uh, concatenation of multiple network to get more um, general representation? Then it might can uh, solve a number of other tasks, even though they have totally different characteristics, because we have higher chance to get similar um, sources to learn representation. So this is our basic motivation. And um, uh, to, um, to tackle this um, hypothesis, we um, do this um, experiment. So we, it is twofold. First uh, row indicates the, the framework for the learning. So, and the second row is um, the procedure of the uh, evaluation. I will uh, come back to this figure a number of times, so I will quickly just skip this now. So, to do the uh, experimentation, it's very important to what and how to learn. 
because we want to represent, uh, learn a representation. So we decided to go with uh, supervised or semi-unsupervised learning uh, with different learning tasks. Um, <laughs> sorry. And this is the list of the learning uh, uh, labels or information or tasks we have in this experimentation. So I will quickly overview um, this uh, text. So first one is unsupervised learning, or it's actually semi-unsupervised because we generate labels uh, using this uh, CMES network. So the net, uh, parameter of this two representation network is tight, so they share some net, uh, um, weight. And then we generate, uh, they put a randomly selected uh, very short chunk of the audio throughout this two input uh, uh, layer. And we generate the labels based on the fact that these two samples of music are actually sampled from one track or they are sampled from another track. So it's pseudo label to learn um, similarity between the music. It's not exactly a similarity. More uh, specifically, it, ca it should be called as a membership prediction. Um, but we also can be seen this kind of task as a distance learning, sort of. And second one is um, bit per minute uh, information. Uh, like I mentioned, this is related to the tempo of the track. But uh, we use these uh, values, not um, value from human annotation. So it is estimated from the algorithm, which is um, developed on uh, top-down um, knowledge, domain knowledge. So tho those values have errors, but we um, just admit that errors because we believe that even though they are in some kind, in some sense, they are er um, not accurate. We can still um, learn something. And next is we also can use any kind of metadata along uh, comes uh, with the music tracks, and we decided to use um, release ear. And the another one is a social tag. So, for, uh, so the services like a last FM, the users, but, uh, but a large pool of users just uh, give a tag to each of music tracks. Um, they can be very noisy, like this. Uh, this is from an, an, another um, person's presentation. So these are actual tags um, I reused. Um, this is, uh, of course, there are very meaningful uh, texts, such as a uh, rock, um, jazz, and hip hop, but also m very much of the tech, the population of the tech contains this kind of noise. So th th this is a limitation. And also, we can get um, another kind of uh, user generated uh, information. Uh, in, in this case, we can use the play count of each track per each individual user which indicates the, in the in individual's prefer, uh, preference over the, the music tracks. So this data set is actually used from a music recommendation uh, task, but we can also use this as our learning uh, target. And we have another uh, set of um, music genre tag, but in this case, those are really expensive tags because we used a uh, tag from a, a CDR, stands for Central Discotheque in Rotterdam, located in Rotterdam, Netherlands. They hired three or four professional annotators, and their job is just taking genre to every single released album in the Netherlands. So they have really clear set of 367 genre tags, and they are hierarchical. And compared to this uh, tag, uh, generated from user is very clean and very accurate, and it's um, the, the uh, annotator's point of view. And we can also grab some information from lyrics, um, so we can uh, build a back of word uh, vector, which is each dimension of the the vector means the number of counts of each word included in the lyrics, entire lyrics. So from this, we can get some nuance or meaning of the lyrics. To, uh, to learn from the audio signals. And we also try to use combine of one of those two. So we use uh, this user generated text and use the, the artist ID to uh, get uh, artist uh, tag vectors, which means the, the, the number of uh, tags for each, uh, the t uh, number of uh, tags belongs to each artist. And uh, to do that, we used uh, the million song data set. 
uh, this includes uh, the all the, uh, the metadata and side information I uh, mentioned before uh, for a million songs. But uh, it's uh, all the all million songs does not contain all the information, so we need to uh, um, uh, filter them. So eventually, we we'll we uh, used uh, forty six thousand tracks for the training. Um, but uh, like I mentioned, most of the tech uh, the informations are pretty noisy, and um, it's very hard to um, clear them by hand. So we try to choose uh, the, the automatic way of reducing noises. So uh, we, the another advantage of to do that is in, in terms of experimentation settings, we can regulate the number of dimensionalities to learn something. So for example, for the tech, uh, the multi-dimensional discrete targets like a tech, which is very noisy, but also very uh, semantically rich, we can um, reduce the uh, dimensionality of the text, which is originally half million, to the, the, the fixed length such, uh, k, then we can get uh, latent topics of the text. And in a similar manner, we can uh, cluster the continuous scalar values like BPM or uh, release year. Uh, then we can get clusters of uh, BPMs over our uh, learning uh, tracks. And then we can uh, use the uh, posterior distribution of each samples over the clusters. Then we, we can have very similar categorical distribution over the latent clusters or latent topics as a learning target. So for example, we can get this kind of latent topics. And this is, uh, tr these clusters are trained with a PLSA probability semantic, uh, latent semantic analysis. Uh, and then we can uh, sh uh, check that each uh, clusters, so these tags are uh, strongly social tags, um, belongs to these latent uh, uh, topics, and we can see that cluster is makes sense and very um, useful for um, especially uh, clearing the noise. So that is part two preparing this part, the learning sources, and then I will uh, give you the uh, contents about the learning. So we choose to go with a convolutional neural network. Specifically, the architecture is almost exactly the same as um, one from um, VGG and neural network. Uh, it's um, using very tiny rectangular filters, typically uses an uh, image um, um, tasks. But even it also turned out that this architecture is also very strong in many of the music-related fields. So people are music fields are still figuring out why it's so working well in the audio, but we still don't know. Um, but it's, since it's very popular and working well, as a generic, we choose to go with this a single structure. And this is our learning objective. Since we can have multiple objectives, uh, our, we set our objective as some of the uh, individual networks. So we didn't have weights between the tests here, um, but one can definitely have some different uh, weightings. Um, probably one can even learn the weightings throughout the learning, but we didn't do that. We just uh, treat all the, the learning objectives as equally. So, uh, and the loss function, we choose to go uh, with uh, uh, KL divergence because all of our learning targets are now processed into categorical distribution and then we can, uh, after we can set up as output of our network is as a, as a, as a, with a softmax uh, nonlinearity, we can also get um, probability distribution of uh, the uh, fixed length k, same as our uh, latent topics. And yeah, we have a neural network app and learning target z and uh, parameters. And since we can have diverse kind of um, architectures to deal with this multitask, so we tested different uh, type of uh, structures. So this one is our baseline, base model. Since this one is only a single uh, column of network, encodes uh, audio signal into a single set of uh, the latent factor, uh, latent uh, the features. But if one have different learning targets or different pre-trained network, definitely one straightforward way is just grabbing them as concat and concatenate 
those features. Then one can get um, multitask based features. And once they have computational resources and they have time and then uh, the data, they can uh, learn uh, their own multitask based uh, shared model, net, uh, neural network. And they can, s um, instead of, of um, amount of sharing, is also um, can be uh, very varied. So we tested these four uh, types of sharing in our experiment. So this one is only sharing the very first two layers, the convolution and the uh, pooling layers. This one uh, shares three blocks of convolution co pooling uh, pairs. And this one is uh, another, uh, so sorry, sorry for that. And this one is uh, another special case. Since we are in our experiment, we extract feature from this level. Um, so this special uh, sharing case means that this one has same uh, dimensionality with uh, this single uh, baseline ca case, but this is still trained with multiple tasks. That means with the same degree of freedom, this can contain more meanings from different um, learning sources. So we can compare uh, this case and this case um, regardless of the, the, the varying dimensionality which is happening in these cases. So this is our learning, um, but can be summarized very uh, simply like this. For every iteration, uh, we can pick the task randomly, and then based on the task which is drawn, we can draw samples, X, uh, Z pair in our case, and we can then update model parameter once, and then we can do this over and over until convergence. So obviously, if you have all the, uh, the samples you have have um, all the learning sources, then you can ju in just simply jointly minimize your loss function, some of the loss functions directly, but uh, we, um, this one is uh, seemingly almost converted as the uh, same. So we just go with this, it's because it is more simple. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so we're going over to the second row. <laughs> so we now have this representation learned by different learning uh, tasks. Then we need to evaluate how this uh, representation works in terms of different type of future tasks. So in, in our experimentation, our criteria is um, the average performance over the new adapted task. So to do that, we need to first um, uh, extract features to accelerate the ex uh, experimentation. Um, but the thing is, in our experiment, the window of input is couldn't take whole length of the music because of the computation resources issue. So we, in each of the network, we only see three seconds, uh, 2.5 seconds of the music audio signal. So we need to summarize whole music by aggregating them in uh, some, some way. We uh, use mean and uh, standard variation of each of the features um, uh, processed by this sliding window. And then put this aggregated feature into evaluation task model and then we um, check the performance. And the one downside is since we have so many configuration, we couldn't do exhaustive uh, study. Uh, we just couldn't afford all the computational uh, costs. <laughs> uh, so we just go with uh, the optimal design to get the optimal pair to analysis our results. Eventually, we, we, could, uh, we took uh, this number of uh, neural network, uh, 169 representations. Uh, details are here, um, eight single sources, of course, 78 uh, combination of different sources with the shared architectures, and four all sources involved, and 78 equivalent, which has same combination of learning sources with this without any, any of sharing, so combination of this uh, kind of network, and one concatenation of all single source representations. So eventually we uh, could get this number of uh, networks to evaluate.
And for the evaluation data set, we prepared um, no, the number of different kind of uh, the task in the in music music IR. So first four are classification, and first three is uh, music genre classification, which is most popular in music IR field. Uh, and this one is instrument classification. So uh, given audio signal, this need model need to accurately predict which instrument is playing this um, music. And these two are actually from one data set, which is uh, for music emotion uh, prediction. And this is given by uh, two trajectories of uh, Scala. And the arousal uh, means that uh, the intensity of this music and the valence is th how this music is positive or negative. So the data set is collected by a number of different people to draw a 2D trajectories he while hearing the music. S and we uh, use these values to regress uh, which to what extent this given music have this kind of uh, music emotion. And finally, we have music recommendation setup. So this data set is uh, composed of uh, users' binary preference. Uh, so they can um, indicate thumbs up or thumbs down for each of the tracks. Uh, so we can estimate what this music is going to be preferred by this user. So that is our data set to uh, evaluate. And this is our uh, evaluation model to uh, check if this representation is good or not. So for classification and the regression, we used SVM. And for the recommendation, we used this um, co-factorization based uh, recommendation model. So here, so R is the interaction matrix, which means each user sums up and sums down for each songs. Uh, and this U and V are a low rank uh, solution to approximate this uh, interaction matrix, which uh, used to be called as uh, usually called user factors and item factors. And again, this term is for um, learning this W projection matrix, which pr um, projects the music, uh, the representation we've learned in neural network to the item factors so that we can. Uh, recommend music to certain user without any given previous records. So one can, uh, even though, because without, without this term, the typical, uh, this uh, model of recommendation model, co uh, which called uh, collaborative filtering, is very weak for the, the music which is newly introduced in the market, since there is no previous history of interaction between user and music. Uh, so some other regulation term here. And also, as a baseline rep music representation, we use these three representations. So MFCC is very typical um, music and audio features, uh, very popular for um, both speech and music uh, decades. Uh, and random feature is a feature f extracted from same structure of a neural network, but we didn't do any training. So it's only uh, depends on the structure of the neural network and with uh, random initialization. And uh, the third one is a, a state-of-the-art neural net-based uh, using representation, but in this case, they use only single task. S but direct comparison between this uh, representation and ours is a bit trickier because they used five times more sem observations than us, and their network is much smaller than us. So we just put it as a... Um, comparison purpose, but we couldn't directly compare. So, so before go through the go to the result, if they have if any questions. Yes? Uh, how was the interaction matrix uh, constructed? Yes, so we have binary interaction information between users and music tracks. So we built a number of uh, metrics has a dimensionality of number of users and number of tracks, and just fill the, uh, the in elements is one and zero. Yes. Okay. Then, so yeah, I, I will have. Uh, 
This is overview of the performance of single sources, but I will summarize this in this way. So in single source representations performance, that means the representation use only one learning source uh, is like this. So those artists, CD art tech, the noisy tech, less FM tech, showed in general good performance compared to other learning sources. Um, one uh, interesting thing is all of those including the music uh, tags. Um, and this unsupervised learning and release year and BPM uh, information was not um, um, good compared to uh, the tag-based informations. But there are exceptions. Um, there is a volume data set which is music genre classification again but this is special classification of ballroom dance genres. So for example, salsa, um, rats, uh, etc. cetera. Um, so the one net representation using BPM information was quite working well for this specific data set. Um, substantially better, even much better than uh, state of the art. But in other cases, it was it was uh, not significantly good. And another exception is self in uh, recommendation setup. Again, uh, this un unsupervised learning uh, gave not that uh, good representation in terms of performance, but in this uh, recommendation setup, um, it more or less one of the, one of the better ones. So, and we uh, think that this is because in um, recommendation literatures, it's uh, reported that side information based on the music similarities. Um, yes. Uh, I can't read the labels the, on the x-axis. Oh, yes. Um, so this one is uh, unsupervised learning, and this one is um, release year, and this one is BPM, and this one is, um, Oh, I can't even see. <laughs> so this is uh, BPM, release year, and this is um, taste, which is from um, users' um, in preference information. And this one is uh, tech, noisy tech. And this one is um, lyrics. And this one is EDR tech, um, clear tech. And this one is artist, combining with a tech and artist ID. So more or less, when you go to this way, it's more expensive information you can get. And this one is more cheaper. Um, and we didn't deeply look through the um, relationship between the cost because the definition of cost is very um, unclear. So we didn't do that. But, it, but we can also maybe have this kind of regression line, but it's still tentative. But anyway, the self here is uh, similarity, which is reported that very helpful for recommendation setup. So maybe it is because of that reason. And when you move on to general performance using uh, multiple sources, and again, um, this one is using a single learning source. And this one, is uh, this one is concatenation of a single learning sources. And these threes are a different level of sharing and this one is uh, the, the most extremely shared case of the shared network. And comparing in here for all the seven and evaluation data set, in general, compared to the single cases, um, of course, with some exceptions, using many uh, learning sources can be better. So, This is a um, general summary of that um, performance. So this is single, uh, uh, single source representation, and this is concatenation. And these are shared different levels of sharing. Uh, the insight is less share, large net is better. But like we already uh, know that we have different number of tasks throughout our experiments. And maybe it's because of the um, number of uh, the dimensions. So we also put this uh, result. So 
Here again, the same uh, evolution, seven evolution data set. And these uh, lines are uh, fitted onto, I forgot to mention that each of these points are neural network. They are representations with different conditions. Uh, so we fit this linear model onto our, uh, these results. So X axis is number of running sources which is used for uh, the representation learning and um, y axis is performance for all different data sets. So we can quickly observe that it is highly correlated to the number of tasks. But of course, uh, this green line and the blue line, since they have different number of dimension, uh, dimensionality in their representation, is, can be seen as a very obvious uh, in some sense. But when you see this purple line, this is, like I mentioned, coming from the special case of shared network, which have same dimensionality with uh, single source learning cases. Um, this case also showing that um, some relation, uh, positive relationship between the number of tests and the number of uh, the performance. So that is um, good insight. But another question uh, was emerged. Since these black lines at the number one here, it means uh, the, our base models representation used with a single learning source. When you see these columns, seems when you pick the right most learning sources, then it eventually working fairly well. Then there is, what, what's the point of using multiple sources then? So, so, so that, that was our uh, question, another question. So to see that, we plot this one. Um, but it would be better to have this one. So n we just try to fill the dots. So like I mentioned, each dots are a representation. And fill dot means the representation learned with the best performing learning source. And this empty dot is learned with best uh, this one without a uh, best performing one, and this one with the best performing one. So uh, try to go back. Then we can observe that without this special case, it's hardly uh, to see a clear distinction between <coughs> the empty dots and uh, the field dot, which means that if you, 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 uh, even if you don't have the best fitting learning source to deal with each of data set, maybe you can compensate using number of different worse learning sources. Um, again, this data set is a um, really skewed data set, which is already known to the field that this is highly skewed to the BFM information. And all these groups, uh, uh, this blank line is um, the best single source performance, and these are groups, of course, including this BFM information as a learning source. But again, this is good because um, anyway, the, our network learn very correctly the information related to the BFM. Um, which is uh, generated by the algorithm, not by hand annotation. So with barely free uh, teacher for learning something, it can learn correctly. So this is another um, evidence that we might not need very perfect fitting uh, learning source to uh, get a great representation. So, so we have two dimensions here, and each of dots uh, indicates the learning sources and coloring is based on the data, the evaluation data set. So, and this x axis means that the rank of each learning sources in terms of test com uh, various components, which means that existence of this learning source, uh, to what extent the existence of this learning source affect the entire uh, variance of the, the performance. And the y-axis is simple uh, ranking over each learning, sing, uh, learning source performance over the evaluation task. And this is case where that use uh, test learning source is uh, used only a single, uh, with a single uh, neural network. So we can see that there is no clear correlation and when you, uh, when we calculate the Spearman correlation between these two factors, there is basically almost random, which means that it might uh, be evidence that 
uh, there is no single very strong uh, learning sources which, uh, which, uh, which isn't, uh, couldn't be compensated by many worse learning sources. So in this is which is very good sign because when um, a practitioner wants to build something having this specific kind of um, state and most of uh, the condition it might not be possible to have a lot of domain knowledge to find pinpoint the best learning sources to learn representation. In that case, um, based on this uh, empirical results, one can recommend that just pick as many learning sources as possible or pre-trained models as possible and concatenate them or learn neural network with multiple learning sources, then you may get um, as good representation as um, the representation learned with best source. So this is the take home message. Um, like I mentioned, you can uh, use many as possible. Number of sources may win the sources that best matches to the task at hand. And the representation ruling the MIR task, at least in this field, may not exist. And it is still tentative in terms of uh, statistical uh, significance. Uh, you can use uh, MTL. Uh, if you have resources, train less shared MTL model. If not, just uh, grab a pre-trained model from the field, uh, from the GitHub, from somewhere, and then concatenate them. And actually, this is another side effect when you have um, multi-test-based representation, since um, you can have different aspects of the, the input signal which can explain um, how this representation mean on different aspects. Um, but all of those results, uh, there are some outliers in terms of uh, task at hand, uh, like uh, recommendation data, uh, data set and the volume data set, so be cautious of that. And still we have a lot of questions, of course. Um, we really pinpoint or evaluate on the performance metrics on the transferred uh, tasks, but it may not be optimal to evaluate the representation itself. Then how can you ev evaluate representation as it is? Is there any better matter? Um, so we didn't uh, study it on the, this, so still it's an open problem. And different architectures have, may have different results, but we couldn't afford to um, also um, um, look through different structures um, that may have effect. And more test to test, we, so we have anyway limited option of uh, learning sources, even though it's uh, eight. Uh, so, for example, one we, um, can plug in, in dynamic task in even in MIR field, which can produce um, where the uh, vocal are singing fr uh, from given audio signal. But we couldn't do that. Um, but maybe that kind of different perspective from different kind of tasks can give different uh, goodness to the representation. So. That's all for my presentation, and if you have any questions, please give me a yes. <laughs> yes. One question about the method. Could you go back to the signal source analysis? Yes, this one? No, 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 like the first one, the bar. Yeah, okay. Yep. Actually, one step, one step further back. <laughs> okay. Other direction. Yes. Yes, this one. Yeah. Um, it looks like, in general, the high-dimensional discrete uh, 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 outputs have a better accuracy than the one-dimensional continuous one. Uh, do you use the same loss for all of them, or how do you train this? So, like I mentioned, we first pre-process these learning sources with um, uh, dimensional reduction algorithms. So we set the uh, dimensionality with the same. Um, we tip, uh, more specifically, we used uh, 50 dimensions uh, latent topics for each of the learning sources, and we set all the losses as a KL divergence. And actually, in terms of dimensionality, this one is much larger because this one contains one uh, one million users. So basically, the dimensionality is much uh, bigger here, and this is also discrete and. But maybe this is more um, noisy or, or not 
um, closer enough to the task of our evaluation uh, setup, um, even though we include I intentionally included the recommendation. But interestingly, this um, preference running source are not that good even in the recommendation setup. So that's one, o also one problem, we, uh, question we have. Yes. Another remark about the uh, different architectures. And, yep. um, there, there is a um, this evoke, uh, TensorFlow and PyTorch have numerical instabilities, especially if you have high dimensional input and, uh, and a huge data set. Mm -hmm. So some of your noise might just come from that. Uh, you might want to look at uh, if you have the time to implement this with Fiana. I actually use the Fiana. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and, and thank you. I actually planning to move one of the uh, one uh, from the PyTorch or the TensorFlow soon because this DNA is tough to maintain soon. Yes. Um, so maybe the the thing that uh, that you've been speaking about is how to how learning representations. Um, by training on the first set of tasks, mm -hmm. can, and it can be reused to learn better on the second set of tasks. So yes. So basically transfer. Yes. But um, what if you do just a more traditional multitask learning, and right from the start you you know the list of tasks you will have to solve, and so you could use the same architecture as in your first stage, mm -hmm. and your goal is not to transfer, your goal is just to be good at the different tasks that are given. And so in that case, uh, I mean, did, 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 you, did you or some other people experiment those architectures to compare what is the advantage of uh, sh um, uh, sharing more or less the representations for those several tasks? Mm, yeah, I actually, it, it can be very easily measured while uh, take the um, performance, uh, calculate the measure during the task, using uh, during the learning phase, for example, we have different tasks already, so we can get um, performance of each the, the task performance used in the learning source, and we can measure um, which one is more useful when they are plugged in the learning procedure. But and of course, uh, like you mentioned, um, one can already um, plug in this learning with uh, our um, feature test to serve. But um, we simply couldn't, uh, we didn't do that uh, to stay focused on the chance for our adaptability. But definitely it is really an important way to check if... Um, but was it done by some other people in the community? Or? Mm, no. This actually this one is, as, uh, to my knowledge, the first um, work using multitask learning in the, the neural network uh, application cases. So maybe... Um, some work now will um, come f and soon. Because then, in that context, there is, a, there is a, um, a direct link between this work and actually the work on uh, 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 multi-goal um, exploration and, and reinforcement learning that mm -hmm. we discussed in the previous talks, yep. in the sense that here, instead of sampling tasks randomly, mm -hmm. you could uh, sample them uh, adaptively Mm -hmm. You could do curriculum learning, and so for example, you could use the bandits maximizing uh, the measure of learning progress, mm -hmm. like uh, in the talks uh, previously. Yeah. But 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 then I guess this is mostly useful for the case where your goal <coughs> in the end is to is to be good at the set of predefined uh, tasks. It's um, the, the use of that for transfer is a bit less clear. Yeah. Um Especially when uh, people who doesn't have any domain knowledge is and need to use some kind of encoders to make ease of their own task. So that was our scope. But yeah, that, but that is very important because in, in our experiment, we didn't, uh, like I mentioned, didn't weight it, the losses across the uh, lo losses used in the, the learning phase, even though we used multiple ones. So maybe that uh, even um, um, made some differences of the quality of a representation. Maybe just having the same weight does not optimal. Mm 